And we're live. Hello, everybody. And welcome, Tino and Andreas. I'm super, super happy and excited today to uh, to have this uh, Malt Academy, uh, like Malt and Accountable seminar with you today. And I'm really thankful for everyone who's logging in because we had some mix up with the timings. So I apologize in advance. I will quickly do an introduction about myself and uh, about Malt, and then I will hand over the mic to our great uh, partners from Accountable. And uh, yeah, so my name is Leah. I'm a community manager at Malt. What uh, what Malt is, is we are a freelance platform, a freelance marketplace, and we connect freelancers uh, to companies of all sizes. And uh, the unique thing about us is that we were founded by freelancers. So uh, the freelancers, um, well-being is uh, at the core of Malt, and that's why uh, my role is, well, my role community management is so cool. So I, I started at the beginning of the year and um, was supposed to host really great events for you, for, for our freelancers, um, to help you thrive, to help you throughout your freelance careers, but also to um, introduce you to Malt. And um, with Corona, we moved everything really quickly digital. So what we started is the Malt Academy. It's um, a peer-to-peer -peer, um, webinar. Uh, series and uh, so we moved every all of our uh, all of our events online and um, today I'm especially proud uh, to um, start and kickstart our new partnership with uh, with Accountable so um, what we want to do is to help you um, thrive and to uh, yeah give um, Accountable and their great uh, tool and uh, a platform also to uh, share their knowledge and expertise. And without further ado, I will uh, give the mic and hand the mic over. So thanks so much. And um, yeah, excited to have you all here. Thanks, thanks, Leah, for the, the introduction. Uh, great to be here. So um, uh, maybe, maybe we start uh, quickly by uh, introducing ourselves. Um, uh, my name is Tino. I'm uh, the founder of Accountable Germany. And with me, I have Andreas, our partner tax advisor, who's been in the business uh, for, I think, like 15 years doing actively tax advisory for freelancers. Yeah, right? just about nearly 20 years. So it's, uh, yeah, um, Steuerberater since 17 years. So a long time and working a lot with freelancers, yeah. Nice. So um, we, we're starting off this, uh, this series with, uh, with Malt on tax tips for freelancers. And uh, for this episode, we uh, decided to um, to start with uh, the topic how to file your tax return in, in Germany, and um, please see this uh, as an opportunity to, to ask your questions um, anytime during the webinar. Um, you can use uh, um, the chat or the, the questions box um, you see on, on the right, and we try to answer uh, your questions during the uh, the webinar to make this more like a dialogue. Uh, of course, we know from past experiences what are like, the most important uh, points, the most important questions. So we will go deep on, on this. But um, your, if you have brought like a certain uh, type of tax question with you, I think now is the time. We have a great expert uh, and tax certified tax advisor with Andreas here who can actually um, help you today answer some of uh, the thoughts you have in your head uh, concerning your, your tax and financial situation. Um, in the coming uh, um, editions of our uh, of our series, we will go deep on, on certain topics. Today, as I said, we cover the, the tax return in Germany. And um, just uh, to get started, give you an overview, what is the agenda for today? Um, first, a uh, short overview of what we do at Accountable and why we are in, we think, in a good position to, um, to answer your questions and, and, and help you out on, on the tax side. Then um, the basics on uh, filing your taxes, and then also um, deep diving into into any questions that might uh, come up and arise during the webinar. Um, what do we do at Accountable? Basically, we build a very simple tax app for freelancers. So, as a freelancer, as you, you probably know, you're obliged to do bookkeeping, but normally you know what your business looks like, and you do bookkeeping just for tax purposes. So, what we decided to build is a very simple app where you can actually um, just enter your expenses, your invoices, and uh, under the hood, 
the text bookkeeping is, is, uh, is done. And then with the tap of a finger, you can just send it off via the government API, Elster, to the government, and um, it becomes for you less of a hassle. Um, stuff is automatically synchronized with your, uh, with your bank account. And um, as you go in your everyday life, if you have an expense, you go out for lunch with a colleague, you take a picture, you have the, um, you have the receipt stored, uh, securely filed, and also um, yeah, uh, counted towards your taxes uh, at the end of the month or the year, um, depending on what kind of taxes we're talking about. So just to give you a short overview, what is, what is our app doing? Um, we give you tax tips for every expense you, you scan. And um, you can see what is actually your cash position, what kind of VAT and income tax you will have to pay. Um, you have an overview of your, your invoices when they are paid. You can also produce invoices in the app. And um, you can connect your bank account to reconcile uh, all your um, income and your expenses to then automatically uh, file your taxes uh, at the end of the month. Um, that is a short overview of what we do at Accountable. If you want, feel free to, to check it out. You can find it in the App Store under Accountable and, and have a go. Later on, I will um, give you a short code where you can have a pro account for a free period of time. Um, I think that's just a, a short overview of what we do at Accountable. We've partnered with uh, Andreas to also service all our users with uh, on-demand tax advice uh, when they need it. Um, there's always um, some issues coming up for consultancy and uh, it's great to have someone who's been working with freelancers and also experts uh, for quite some time. And um, let's start with a couple of basics. Um, Andreas, uh, yeah, just, to just to give you an overview, there are about 30 types of uh, taxes in, in Germany, like say a tax for dogs or there are some, some small um, areas where you have to pay taxes for your horse. Right now, for you, important, uh, there are three free taxes. It's income tax. You have to file an income tax return. Of course, it's VAT in German, Umsatzsteuer or Mehrwertsteuer. And the third one, just part of you, is trade tax, Gewerbesteuer. Trade tax, this is the most complicated thing in the beginning. You have to yeah, not decide. You have to find out whether you are, have to pay a trade tax or not. Um, first time being, it's not, it's not that big issue because if you pay trade tax, this is deductible from your income tax. So your tax burden doesn't change a lot. It's just some more administration stuff that you have to consider. So if you start your business, you should clarify this at the beginning, whether you have to pay trade tax or not. Um, income tax, VAT, I found this on the web. trade tax, are, um, yeah, you have to file yearly tax return for this, um, and you may have to pay prepayments for this. Income tax and trade tax, it's quarterly prepayment payments you have to make. Um, it's not always the same date. You have to keep in, this in mind. Um, otherwise, you have to pay penalties if you pay late. Just to have to keep in mind that every quarter you have to pay income tax and, and Gewerbesteuer. But at first, you get an assessment, a letter from the tax office, and this assessment says, when do you have to pay and the amount? So just to have to consider their total uh, minimum of, how much is it, uh, eight payments of uh, prepayments. VAT is a little bit different. VAT is usually starting monthly. Um, if, you are in, if your VAT payment over a year is lower, then it could be quarterly or yearly. But usually it's monthly payments. And just for the beginner, you have to, yeah, make it monthly. Um, just to, yeah, there, there's an um, there's a possibility not to pay VAT. Usually, it's not um, if you if you're working and have have a turnover than more than twenty two thousand, then you don't have to pay VAT. It's just I don't think that's um, that's the case in in your situation. But just to have to keep in mind, there is a situation that you don't have to pay VAT. It's called a client unternehmer. Yes. So, and there's a, a couple of tools. We're going to go into this later. It's a couple of um, ways you can you can file uh, your your VAT. And um, we're going to come to those uh, um, 
yeah, possibilities to file VAT uh, later on in, in the presentation. But that's just to give like a short overview, like the, the tax that will be most relevant for you are those three taxes. Um, uh, for Freiberufler, uh, only the first two ones apply. So um, when you register as a freelancer, it's really like important to find out, are you a Freiberufler or Gewerbetreibende? In case you're a Freiberufler, you don't pay the third uh, type of tax. Um, so, um, yeah, I think um, when we start uh, giving those, uh, those, those webinars, you always said there are like, yeah, four big points um, you should uh, take care of because, um, uh, as Andrea said, like the, um, the rhythm of paying taxes uh, depends on your situation. Um, but if you have like a good bookkeeping, then uh, this rhythm becomes much easier on you. So um, uh, maybe you can just uh, yeah. go through this. So the, the basis of all of your income or the tax returns is your bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is just the same than collecting the correct data. Um, otherwise, if you don't do it correctly, you don't have your profit or loss and you don't can fill in your income tax return. And the same for VAT, if you're doing your bookkeeping, if you're doing it correctly, usually it's, it's not that complicated to file the VAT return, especially if you use a software. If you use a good software, you don't have to think about it, the VAT return will be sent automatically correct. This is usually the case. If you have to do it on your own, then it's probably more complicated. Um, so, just to have to keep in mind, the first step is doing your bookkeeping correctly, and the next step, then, if you do it, if you do it right, the, the rest of it will be much more simple and much more easier to use, and you have a good data source for doing your tax return correctly. And for bookkeeping, you always um, have your, your paper file uh, handy yeah. to show like what would be the good structure to do that. Yeah, right? this is also a possibility um, to use just a paper file. I don't go into that detail, but let's say we have um, special categories to use this. Um, let's say one category you put in your income, the other one you put in your expenses and your bank statements. You can do it the, the hard copy way, that's possible, and it's okay. Um, of course, it's more complicated to hand this out to your Steuerberater, you have to send it by mail or just have to give it to him directly. Um, the digital solution is much more handy, so um, you can use this, um, but if you decide whether to use digital way or hard copy, it's always better to decide one way don't mix it. So that means if you have, if you're using the hard copy file, it's better to print out all digital things and put it in the hard copy file. Uh, and if you use 100% digitally, then you should scan it or make a picture of this receipt and upload it to the, to your software. So it's don't mix it, otherwise it could get a mess. And you at the end of the year, you don't know whether you have taken this receipt into account or you take one receipt twice into account. That's, that's not so, so what you advise is basically you need um, you have your invoices, your revenue side, you have your expenses, the receipts for all your costs, and then you need your bank statements to reconcile uh, what happened on, on in your bank account. Yeah, right. many many of your expenses, especially, um, you don't get a receipt automatically, or you get an email if you forgot about it. So it's better to check your bank account whether you've forgotten something or not, and of course. It's in most of the cases, the payment date is relevant. So um, it's not, if you send an invoice to, to your client, usually you don't have to pay tax on it in that moment. When you get the money from it, then you have to pay tax on it. So this is especially important. Let's say you file an invoice in December and you get the money in January, then the income is going to the next year. Yes, but you just had this uh, with uh, actually a discussion with the user in, in our app. You file, say, in uh, you have you have you've worked in August. You write your uh, your uh, invoice in September, and you get the money in October. Then actually in October it's going to be taxed. Um, that is the general rule for for uh, for freelancers normally. 
And so the, the payment date, that is, that is the important date. That's why you need your bank statements. And um, we solve this in the app so that it's actually automatically connected the invoice to the bank statement. So it goes into the correct VAT month. But um, yeah, this shows like the importance of proper bookkeeping to not walk into uh, some of those um, uh, mistakes some freelancers do, which is getting suddenly um, funny letters from the tax office um, that, that uh, are very disconcerting. So uh, yeah, if you've yeah, told me that before, that is one of the major issues that people get really like nervous. Yeah, and you at, at first sight you don't um, don't see whether it's urgent or not. Most of them looks very urgent. Some of them are not. Just a reminder, but others could uh, could be very serious at the end. So one example, what's usually, what happens all the time is when you start your business, you have to file an eight pages questionnaire and send to the Finanzamt. So you get your Steuer number, your tax number. And what you don't know maybe is that no one says to you, you have to file VAT returns. So you just send this questionnaire after two, three weeks, you get your Steuer number and then the Finanzamt waits for your VAT returns. And if you don't send it, then you get some nasty letters after a while, and just uh, if, if they are bad, they could assess penalties on it. So this is the first step you do. You you get a letter uh, with penalties. So this is really nasty. So you have to read and think about all these. these yeah, and, and you, you can avoid it if you if you plan this 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 yeah. ahead. Um, there's a question uh, uh, already about. Um, uh, is it is it sufficient to keep only digital copies and discard the original paper copies? Um, because yeah, the digital scanned copies are they legal proof? Uh, uh, do we do I need to keep it? What are the rules here? Yeah, you have to keep the original. In, in any case, there are some. It's possible to get rid of all these nasty receipts, but um, then you have a, a special procedure. That's nothing that I would recommend because it's hard to fulfill it correctly. So it's better, so you should keep the original, that means original um, PDF receipt or original paper receipt. But if you do it the digital way, you just take a picture and put it in the archive and put it, uh, yeah, you can, you don't need it anymore in usually. It could happen that the finance have asked for the original, but usually they don't. So what you're saying is legally you should keep all originals. That means like if it's a, if it's an email, keep the email with the PDF. Don't delete it. If it's paper, then just file it away. Um, but if you if you have digital bookkeeping, then it's normally sufficient to uh, digitize everything, take pictures of it, scan it, and in case of an audit, you can then hand over all digital copies to the tax office. And I think you told me in your experience you've never seen that this was a problem and the finance was actually looking for yeah. the real. Uh, Usually, let's process. say if you do it with accountable, it's connected. The, the receipt is connected to the bookkeeping. So that, and if everything looks correct and it's nothing, nothing suspicious. serious, suspicious, then they won't ask for the original usually because they don't have reason for ask, asking for. Yeah, but uh, legally throwing it away is, is something, there's a procedure to do this, but uh, you need like uh, some kind of uh, second person that, prove, that looks at it and proves it. So to set up this process for most uh, freelancers, it's, it's not uh, uh, worth the hassle. So um, what we normally advise is digitize everything and then keep like the paper copies just in a folder where you just like, uh, yeah, you just store it and uh, you probably won't need it uh, ever again. Um, the problem also is with uh, um, uh, those paper receipts, they fade out over time, so maybe you can't read them after like uh, five to six years, so if you have a digital copy, that saves you also this, this kind of problem. Um, that's concerning that question. Um, yeah, con how long do you need to keep the paper digital copies? Yeah, it's, it's usually about, let's say, about 10 years. Uh, if you look at the details, it's not exactly 10 years, could be longer, but let's say 10 years and then you can throw it away. <clears throat> 10 years after the year's over. So it's, um, yeah. So normally you would just like have one file where you put all paper copies and you store it away, knowing that if you need to show something or look something up or search something, because it's really bad to search on paper files, you have a digital version of your bookkeeping where you can find stuff easily. 
That is what we normally advise. And um, there's another question concerning how to use your workspace at home. I think we will go into this later on. Yeah. I went to other deductibles where we um, will deep dive on how you can actually save money uh, on your taxes. Yeah. Um, I think this also brings us to the, the next point. Play the VAT game to your advantage. So if you pay VAT, so if you um, if you have to charge VAT on, on your invoices, you can also actually um, save VAT on your expenses. Yeah, exactly. The VAT that uh, you have to pay to other um, to, to to others, you you can get it back if it's for business use. But you need a uh, receipt for this, and the VAT rules are a little bit more stricter than the income tax rules. So you have to keep this in mind that um, you get a proper invoice for it. Um, you know, there's a rule up to 250 euros where you can have a small receipt. Um, they don't have to, to include all the details. If it's more than 250 euros, you have a correct receipt with your name, your address, and of course, name, address of the, the other person, and tax number and all the stuff. You see, um, if you have, let's say, um, invoice from a cab driver, it looks usually, it looks very simple. If you get an invoice to buying at Media Markt and Computer, Of course, you see your name on it. This is quite important. Um, there are special rules for, let's say, if you go to a restaurant, if you have a restaurant receipt, you have to put, sometimes you have to put notes on it. If you have a restaurant receipt, you have to add the name of the other person you invited to and the reason for the business meeting. This is important. That's interesting. We always got the question, does uh, this restaurant uh, receipt, Bewirtungsbeleg, does it have to be signed? No, there's usually on this piece of paper, there's a, there's a, a field there, there you can sign it. You don't need to sign it. I think it's, this is for, for bigger companies if you want to get the money back from the company and they want to sign the receipt. But you don't need to sign, it's just these two information. Yeah, that's something that, that came up always. Um, yeah, that brings us to the, the next point. Um, be on the lookout for professional expenses. Um, You um, uh, have to pay taxes, you have to file taxes, but also unlike uh, employees, uh, as a freelancer, you have the opportunity to actually deduct quite a lot of expenses. And this can come up to like a sizable amount of money. And uh, we will, um, uh, at the end of the webinar, um, do a, a first uh, a review of what we uh, know from our experience are the like, most cost-effective uh, uh, deductibles for, for freelancers um, that we, we, we find. Um, There's a question coming up. Um, can I write an Eigenbeleg if I buy something small for my business from a private person, for example, on eBay Kleiner Zeit address? Yeah, an Eigenbeleg, you can write an Eigenbeleg at any time when you don't have the original. This is okay, this is fine, especially if there's no VAT included. Um, you shouldn't do the, that too often, otherwise they, they don't think you have your bookkeeping. Uh, you, you couldn't do it properly. So, yeah, it's, you can write an Eigenbeleg generally. And, uh, But if you buy something from eBay Kleinanzeigen, you usually have um, a digitally invoice, an email or what else. I think this is probably better than an Eigenbeleg. And just, just for, for, for clarity, what should be like on an Eigenbeleg? What should be um, uh, on the receipt you write yourself? Yeah, you describe the situation where you're writing an Eigenbeleg. So what you have done, what you've bought, the date, um, the amount, the, the money. amount and the other person you paid for. So okay. this, is, and you, this is something you usually sign. You sign yourself to say what I put down is correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. Moving on um, to actually like the the issue of um, filing your VAT. Uh, how is this actually done? What what are the options to file it? So if you you start as a freelancer, uh, you have to do uh, say you have to do a monthly VAT file filing and um, what are your options how how you, how you can actually do this and get this done yeah the, the first option you you mentioned or you, you put on on the slide is elsa there's important to know you couldn't file or you couldn't do your bookkeeping at elsa you just can file the returns and there's a minimum help in it some explanations but you have to know what to do let's say one example uh, is if you have let's say uh, clients from a foreign country, let's say France, within Europe, usually you have reverse charge. You have to declare it correctly, otherwise you get nasty email, or 
nasty mails from the finance. Or directly an audit, maybe, if you do it. Or an audit, if you do it uh, too, too often. So it's, if you have reverse charge, you don't pay VAT. The, the amount on, on the bottom of the ELSA return is the same, but you have to declare all the amounts of the reverse charge cases. So this is something you have to know what to do in ELSA and there's no bookkeeping in it. But it's so for free. Just, so, just, so. For, just, just for, for clarity, it's the government portal. It's actually a service by the government to um, for free. You don't have to pay anything for it. You can declare your taxes, but you will have to do your bookkeeping uh, on some other kind of platform. And uh, uh, as far as I know, it's just only available in German language. Yeah. And it is German tax language. So um, you also need to, 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 to get an account at Elster. This uh, uh, involves a, 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 writ a written paper registration where you then get a key to log on to the platform. So it's actually nice to have this, this portal. It's not 100% user friendly and you, you should know what you're doing or should get support for someone who, who knows uh, how, to, how to handle this platform. That's uh, maybe like the first first option how to how to um, find yeah. VAT. But but usually if you use if you searching for someone who helps you in Elster, the third option going directly tax advisors may be more efficient. Maybe more, more because efficient. usually the the other person would just do it their way, so and skip everything what you did. But yeah, it's hard to find someone who knows about Elster and helps you out. Um, the, the second option is using a bookkeeping software. Um, there are two possibilities. The, one, the older one is having buying a software, install it on your computer. Um, usually those software, let's say someone from Haufe, Nextware, uh, um, this is, you can do a lot with it. It's very usually, powerful. It's very powerful, but it's, yeah, usually hard to use. Usually you have to have some made some experience with other software or know how, how to, to do your bookkeeping. The other solutions are online software using a browser. Um, there's some other solutions for account instead of accountable. Um, you can just try it, use it. Um, most of them I think usually are most too complicated. There's some I think they, they you, you try to, to start with some easy questions and doing it. Uh, yeah, what we try to do, we try to build like the, the easiest bookkeeping solution, but there are a couple of solutions out there. If you use them, um, they, are, they all connect through the, the ELSA API and enable you to, to do your VAT return. And um, it, it, uh, it keeps you the hassle of uh, figuring out your bookkeeping yourself and you're guided through in an interface. So that is, um, that is where you can do it on your own. Um, but uh, you're still responsible yourself for doing the bookkeeping, and you have to, to see that you have like good software that that is that you understand and that is that is easy to use for you, and you know um, uh, what is happening there. And then the last option is just going to a tax advisor. You can also use a tax advisor in combination with a bookkeeping software, or you can go directly 100% to a tax advisor. That's the classic. Yeah, the, usually tax advisor can do everything. Um, you just give him your your files, and of course the tax advisor can do it. Um, or some of them are working yeah, with a hybrid solution. Let's say you're doing your bookkeeping and the tax advisor do the rest of it. Usually bookkeeping software, what they do is they do automatically VAT return. So you don't have to think about this. It's the most complicated part is the bookkeeping. And they have uh, usually an interface that you can extract all the data, sometimes also the, um, the, the invoices and go to a steuerberater, tax advisor, and give him all the stuff. Yeah, so um, if you let your tax advisor do all uh, your VAT and bookkeeping, that's uh, the most expensive solution. Um, you could get a better deal if you do like, uh, if you want to work with a tax advisor to um, automate your bookkeeping as, as, as much as you can and then get the tax advisor just for um, to, to check uh, your bookkeeping. So that also depends on uh, the peace of mind you need and the setup you want to pursue. Um, that are your options to file your VAT. In any case, you have to file your VAT. If you don't do it, you're going to get into trouble at some point with the, <laughs> with the tax authorities. Um, that on those options, yes, uh, talking about trouble with the tax authorities, um, we thought to, to, to quickly like um, highlight the issues where most people um, uh, can get into, in, into issues and then uh, uh, 
we, we in, in, in the support from Accounto, we get uh, we get information and letters like, hey, how can I handle this? What does this mean? Um, and he uh, normally when you get a letter from the Finanzamt, it's, uh, it's not a nice situation. You try to figure out what does it mean and to ask what are the, the main reasons why stuff goes wrong. Yeah, the, the first one, you say it's monthly, quarterly, yearly. It's all of these uh, due dates. There are some, some differently. Let's say I said the, the prepayments for trade tax and income tax, they are differently. It's not the same date. You have to pay trade tax one month earlier than the income tax. So you have eight different prepayment dates just for those taxes. Additionally, you have um, VAT. It's always the 10th of the next month. But if you have a standard extension, then it's one month later. You just have to keep in mind, usually, if you send us the standard um, extension, I would recommend it. Um, and you file your, let's say, VAT return for October, you have to pay it until 10th of December. And if the 10th of December is on the weekend, then it's the next workday. So this makes it quite complicated. Yeah, uh, this sounds really confusing. Um, and in the end, it's just a calendar. We built this actually yeah. into the app, but um, people, people tend to forget those deadlines. So having uh, some kind of a deadline in your own calendar or in, in an app or some kind of solution that reminds you a couple of days before the deadline, uh, that would be best to, to, to do your uh, uh, returns. That already helps you to get you out of trouble and, 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 and getting reminders that will then uh, yeah, draw you into action at a point where you feel, oh, I don't, I'm running out of time. Yeah, so a good possibility is also, in addition to uh, allow the financier to take money from your account with debit. Um, so that means if you send your VAT return, you don't have to think about any payments. They just take the money from your account, if, if possible. You so should be aware, actually, then, of yeah. the fact that the money will be taken away. Yeah. So um, to have an overview of the cash on hand that is yours and that is what is, what is for the government, is, is uh, extremely important. Otherwise, you think you have uh, uh, money that actually doesn't belong to you. So to have, have this overview is, is, is important, especially if the government can extract the money directly from your, from your bank account. Yeah. Um, yeah, the second point where we also see is uh, uh, confusion about uh, how to properly invoice clients that are uh, not in Germany, but within the EU or outside of the European Union. Yeah, there are, there are several possibilities to tax it or to not to tax it, but the possibilities whether you have to put VAT on it or not. Let's say if you have a service to a company in New York, then usually depending on the service, it's no VAT. If it's to a private person, then it's within VAT. Um, if you have something within the European Union, usually it's reverse charge, so you have to put a special note on your invoice. So this is uh, something that that can really hurt. My recommendation is to do it in the beginning, think about it, do it correctly from the first step. And you have to think about the bookkeeping and the tax return because you have to declare it correctly. Otherwise you get into trouble and you get those letters from the Finanzamt because of this. And not only from the Finanzamt, there are some other authorities who also send letters. Let's say if you don't send these, it's called Zusammenfassende Meldung. It's, it's the Zusammenfassende Meldung is the interview list. So that's uh, a list of all your clients and revenues uh, within other EU partner uh, countries. Yeah, you have to declare it. It's, it's another due date. It's every usually every quarter and up to the 25th of the next month. There is no extension. So just you have to keep in mind. And um, if you don't send this, but you declare it on your BT return, you get a letter from uh, another authority. So and this could make it a little bit weird. Then we have a couple of questions on, 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 on those issues. So uh, Juliana is asking, relating to VAT returns, when I use a service provider abroad, e.g. based in the UK, she sends an invoice without the UK VAT. Do I then have to add this to my VAT return filing and pay VAT on her invoice in Germany? Does the same thing count if I buy a product course online from someone abroad, Andreas? Yes, UK is special. UK usually is not in the European Union, but uh, for tax purposes, it's in the European Union until the end of the year. So it's a little bit special, but usually you get an invoice from a company without VAT and a note that 
it's reverse charge. You have to pay VAT in it in Germany, but usually you can get it back and the same tax return. It's just administration work. You, you have to declare it and then you get the VAT, but you pay to the Finanzamt directly back from the Finanzamt. This is, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure whether this is understandable, but um, this is the case. It's just um, doing your VAT return right. Um, so let's say another solution why this is uh, makes sense is let's say you buy something from France without VAT with your uh, VAT number, then you have to pay VAT in it, and then you use this for your private use. Then you don't get the VAT back that you pay to the Finanzamt. So therefore, you have to do this this stuff. But usually, in, in most of the cases, you buy something, you have, you pay VAT, you don't pay it, you declare it as taxable, and then you deduct it say VAT return. But if you don't do it, um, and they will audit you, let's say one year or two years later, then you get maybe you get uh, into trouble if you don't do it correctly. I mean, that's 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 also like the the power of a. a, a our tax app and your bookkeeping solution, you put in the data and in, in, in the back end, it's all being calculated the way it should be and being declared in the right fields. Um, and also you have like an, an overview of your cash position and the VAT you, you, you show to the tax office is correct. So you don't have to um, to figure this out yourself. You could do it also with an, I know a freelancers who do this with Excel, mm -hmm. um, but you have to be very sure of the stuff you're putting together there. Um, otherwise, at some point, um, you might run into, in, into problems. Um, another question, um, I have a VAT number, but my incomes were so far under the threshold. Uh, do I still need to, to file a VAT return, like for zero, zero euros, like null meldung? I haven't got any letters from the Finanzamt yet. Yeah, maybe you can answer the, the third step at first, um, VAT ID or, or VAT number, because yes. this, uh, it comes together. Good. Um, there are several let's say tax numbers that uh, in Germany, it's uh, Steuernummer, this is a number that you get from the Finanzamt, it's VAT ID, this is the um, Umsatzsteuer Identifikationsnummer that you get from the other authorities uh, that, that you just use for European um, clients. And yeah, maybe you have a private Steuernummer, could be you can have more than one Steuernummer from different finance center or just from the same. And you have a Steuer Identifikationsnummer. Um, you, you probably ask about that. Uh, the question was, I have a VAT number. So this always, um, I need to ask, is it the VAT ID, the European one, or is it just the Steuernummer? Um, so that makes it a so little just to give you an idea, the Steuernummer is the one with the two slashes. Yeah, um, exactly. So uh, and the uh, the VAT ID is the one in Germany. It starts with DE. Yeah. So um, your question was um, so, and if you don't do it correctly with all these numbers, of course you get letters from the Finanzamt because they don't understand. And you'd also need this for your transactions if you let's say pay VAT to the Finanzamt. You should put this, the Steuernummer, as a reference. Otherwise, they don't know what to do, or they just get the amount, and then you get letters. How shall I book this from the Finanzamt? So, in, in case she has, she has applied for a for a, a European VAT ID, say for an Umsatzsteuer ID, yeah. and um, but her income is under the Kleinunternehmer uh, uh, threshold. Does she have to uh, uh, to file the uh, the VAT return or not? You have always to file a VAT return. Um, if you are a client unternehmer and don't pay VAT, even in this case, you have to file a yearly VAT return. Um, yeah, if you don't, what does it mean under the threshold? Um, you probably mean um, client unternehmer. If you are a client unternehmer and if you charge VAT, if you put VAT on your invoice, you have to pay this amount to the finance fund. It, it is so. It's uh, so that is that is like the most important thing. If you if you are a small business, a client unternehmer, you, you you must not show VAT on your invoices. If you have ever shown VAT on your invoices and charged your client, then this VAT you have to pay because the VAT belongs to the state. If you show it and you collect it from from a, from a customer, then you have to give it to the state. If you haven't shown VAT on uh, 
uh, on your invoices and you're under the threshold, then you, you, you don't have to push VAT to the state because you haven't collected it, correct? Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you have a VAT number or not. But at the end of the year, even small business, client animal, have to do a VAT declaration. They don't uh, have to do the monthly ones because they, uh, they're exempt from that, correct? Yeah, exactly. You just file a yearly tax return. It's just the returns we had at the beginning. You still have to file income tax return. You even have to file a trade tax return if you... And and that and if, yeah. it's all, if you don't have to pay tax, it doesn't matter. And you have to file a yearly tax return. But it's very much easier because you just have to put in your turnover from the last two years. Um, there's another question. Um, I work as a Freiberufler uh, and a Gewerbetreibende. So Freiberufler as a software developer, Gewerbetreibende, income from mobile apps. Should I fill in my monthly VAT declaration for both together in one form? I have only one Steuernummer. Yeah, this is also a little bit weird. VAT and income tax is completely different. So let's say you can have 10 different companies, businesses on, on the income tax part, but you are just as a person, you have to pay VAT. So you have to collect all the VAT from all your businesses and put it in one VAT return. So you just have one VAT number or one Steuer number and just have to file one VAT return. So the, quite, the answer is yes, <laughs> You're, uh, uh, you have to um, uh, do your VAT declaration for both uh, uh, your, your software development and your income from mobile apps in, in one, VAT, one VAT return. And yes, that always like highlights the benefit of uh, either working with a tax advisor or using a bookkeeping solution because um, to keep in track of it uh, yourself can be, can, can be a lot of work and, and at the same time you're not working in your main job. So um, yeah, this uh, on, on, on issues we, we observe in our daily, daily work um, with clients and, uh, and users and um, uh, to um, yeah, uh, give you also some, some benefits on, on now we told you how to pay taxes, uh, uh, like the big outline of it, um, how to save taxes is, is a, a big part of um, uh, what we also we try to do in the app. You as a tax advisor, you, you, you advise on how to save taxes because um, uh, as a freelancer, you already have to do a lot of work, as you've seen. You have to file those returns, you have to pay those taxes, you have to collect VAT for the government. Um, but also you have a couple of benefits because you can structure much more as an, uh, than, than an employee could. So you have much more opportunities to also deduct uh, deduct expenses and um, we've collected a couple of experiences on what is most uh, interesting to freelancers normally and there was a question in, in the beginning for um, the, the home office, uh, the, your workplace at home and um, maybe we can start with, uh, uh, with this, this bullet point here on the slide. Yeah, so <laughs> we won't go into the detail of home office, I had a webinar about 45 minutes just with this topic. This could be very complicated, but in general, um, the home office is deductible if you have a separate room and if you're working usually in this room. So, and you have don't have any other room where you can work. So your main, your main, uh, uh, you say, uh, your main office is uh, like, uh, is a room in your apartment that yeah. is your home office. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah. It have to be in your home, and it have to be an office room. If it's something different, let's say if it's not at your home, um, or if it's not an office room, there are all these rules that you have probably heard about us. All these um, limiteds, uh, these limits, um, they are not belong to to other rooms or any office room outside of your home. So let's say um, you're working in a home office. Usually, you have to fulfill these uh, strict uh, conditions, separate room, and you have to use it as a main office room. Otherwise, it's not deductible or is it kept unto 1,250 euros. Um, if you have, let's say, if you rent an office room at another house, let's say uh, at your neighbor's house, then you can deduct it and they won't ask you whether it's a separate room or is it uh, how do you use it? So uh, this is just for your home office. So talking about like a, a, a separate room and office within within your flat, um, the finance will usually ask how many square meters do you have? Yeah. 
and they will also ask for a, a layout of your flat, Grundriss, to, 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 to see is it feasible, is it plausible that you have a, a, an office in, in, in your flat. So if you have like a, a two-room apartment, um, the Finanzamt will probably say it's not plausible that in a two-room apartment one, one room is, is the office. So you would probably have to, to, to make the case and um, uh, from the paper the Finanzamt will get when they, they look at this, it should um, uh, be understandable that yes, this makes sense, this could be an office. Yeah, and sometimes uh, I've seen it that some of uh, your you're also freelancers sending pictures of this room. This is a good idea just to prove it that, that this is an office room. Yes, so there should not be a, a couch where you can a sleeping couch. There can be a bed. It could be a problem. Yeah, of course. Um, what they can do is they can come to you and check whether it's a home office or not. I've seen it that often, but they can do it and they do it, of course. Um, but usually they send a letter beforehand before they ring at your bell, and uh, you don't have to um, give them access to this room if they don't have send a letter beforehand. Um, what so, is deductible? Maybe this question could be also relevant. Of course, part of your rent and all the other expenses that belongs to it, electricity, uh, heating, um, and all these amounts. What about internet access? So yeah. you have like an internet flat rate. Um, of course, you use it for Netflix, but also you use it for Zoom conferences for your, for, for your work. And you actually have like a room in your flat that you use an office. Can you deduct, how much can you deduct of your internet flat rate? Yeah, this is something, um, if you use it privately and for business use, you can deduct 50%. This is, this is the easy, easy possibility. If you work not only two hours a, a week at home, if you use it more often, you're working in a home office, and um, you can say that you need a very good internet connection for this. So um, it doesn't make sense to have two different um, connections to the internet, something in addition you can deduct 100%. So if it's, um, it makes sense, you work a lot of it, you can deduct 100%, it's usually fine. Because all the expenses, let's say 30 euros, 40 euros a month, that's not very much expensive, and I haven't seen any case where a Finanzamt checked this and said, okay, this is not possible, don't deduct this. Okay, um, so maybe like uh, this also moves in, in, into work equipment, but um, if you don't have a separate uh, office room in your home, you can always deduct uh, your table. Yeah. Uh, at, like uh, Arbeitsnische, so where you have like, if you have like a small workspace in your living room where you have like a table, you buy a table for that, you buy a chair, you buy a desk lamp, uh, this is all uh, deductible, correct? This is everything deductible in addition, uh, yeah, sure, that's right. Um, further work equipment that's normally uh, an issue and, and is deductible are like um, I think computers, uh, an iPhone could be could be a, a, a deductible. But there's always the question: How much can I deduct? And um, what are the rules? Can you quickly remind uh, um, people? Usually, if you're working in a, a let's say a freelancer in a digital, um, are you working in digital space? You can deduct 100%. I've never seen a, an issue with that. Um, I would always put 100%. Um, but you, you, you cannot deduct it all in one year. You have to uh, uh, you have to split the deduction over the years. So if it's more than 800 euros, then you have to depreciate it. Um, usually, a good software would do it automatically or help you out. And computer, um, um, iPhone is usually divided or is deducted over three years or 36 months in detail. A chair, a table, I think it's 10 years. So it's, yeah, have to think about it. It's not, it's not a big issue. Yes, normally like uh, in our app, it's, it's in the back end, you just put in, it's an iPhone, then it tells you automatically how, what the Finanzamt uh, accepts. But you have to think about this. You cannot like buy an iPhone, pay say a thousand euros and then, and then deduct it all in one year, it will be split. Some, sometimes I've seen some questions for work equipment. Let's say the coffee machine, is it deductible, yes or no? and also the coffee for it. Um, yeah, this is something that's not clarified. If you have some clients at home, of course, and it could be deductible. If you're just working at home and don't have any clients there, usually it's not deductible. 
But yeah, depending on all of your expenses, if it's if you have low expenses, usually the financer don't really care. Um, moving on, the, the issue of job training. I think this is, uh, has, uh, especially in the last months, been a big issue. People have been maybe buying online courses to 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 yeah. to educate themselves. Um, and we also had in the in the past the question about um, uh, German classes for expats. You work in Germany. You want to. To, to, to get some thing, language courses. What are the rules generally about uh, job training, classes, courses? Uh? So you can deduct uh, job trainings if it belongs to your job, of course, or your profession, or you, let's say, want um, to make money out of it later on. If you do something, let's say you are working as a consultant, IT consultant, and you do some Reiki co uh, courses, um, usually it's not deductible, or, but if you want to start a new business with Reiki, then of course it is deductible. And the same question belongs to language courses. Say if you have a German language course, usually it's a lot of private use, but I would deduct it if you say, okay, I need, I, I want to get some German clients and I need German for my work. Um, it's your decision as a freelancer to have this German course to improve your German to get better German clients. But yeah, it's yeah you, you have to check it in 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 in, in, in all cases. Let's say you're going to um, Mallorca and learning Spanish for your business um, one hour a day. Usually the, the tax office will, will check this and you don't have a chance to, to deduct this. So you really always uh, have to make the case and, and show how this is connected to your professional uh, activity yeah. and convince in the end an auditor that actually um, uh, it is an investment into, into, your, into your business. Yeah. Um, those are like the general rules actually for all deductibles. Um, it's easier with per diems, for example, um, per diems, uh, can you just give the, uh, uh, the background to, to those? Or because um, when we do those workshops and webinars, a lot of freelancers were not aware um, that those actually can be like a, a big source of uh, tax-free uh, yeah, tax money. Yeah, whenever you are out of your home or your first office, your first workplace, uh, for more than eight hours a day, you can deduct 14 euros. It's not VAT, it's just for income tax, but it's 14 euros a day. Even if you're going out to, and the client is one, one house to, to the next to you, then you can deduct, and if it's more than eight hours a day, then you can deduct 14 euros. And you just need to put it in the calendar. Um, usually it's a good idea if you invoice the client to put um, maybe the dates on it, but it's, it's, just, it's not really necessary. Um, it's just necessary to put this in the calendar that you have been working out, outside of your home and your So you don't have to prove it with any receipts. Yeah. So what, what, uh, what we've seen in the past is that freelancers uh, work at the client's uh, place. They, they live in Berlin, they work in Berlin, um, and then they, they um, thought about invoicing their lunch at the client's site. You, you can't do that, but you could get the 14 euros uh, yeah. per diem tax-free which could cover your lunch. So um, you can't come with like a receipt just for your lunch yourself, um, but uh, you could actually use the per diems because you've been working at, working at the client side for more than eight hours. You've been out of your your, your home, your, in your first uh, workplace for a considerable amount of time, and then you can use, uh, use this tax-free allowance. And uh, if you're traveling outside of Germany, then it makes, it's, it's very interesting because you get um, higher per diems usually, for, for food and meals, and you have additional per diems for staying overnight. So let's say going to Brussels. Um, and what's the per diem? You, you know it. I think I think it's uh, the overnight stay is uh, 100, uh, 150 euros about that, and uh, the yeah. per diem is about like 63 euros. So uh, that that uh, there's a big list. Um, you can see it on our website also of. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the rates for certain cities worldwide. So if you travel, um, right now this is obviously uh, not as frequent as it used to be, but this can be a big source of tax-free income also. Yeah, let's say um, you have a business trip to Brussels for one for night, you stay overnight and stay by a friend of you, you don't pay for it, you can deduct 150 euros just from your income tax. That's maybe, a, yeah, that's a good tax tip. 
Um, yeah, and, and on, on travel, I think uh, there's uh, another another good one we we always had is uh, the monthly ticket or the bahn card for the for the Deutsche yeah. Bahn. Um, those those are yeah. There's a there's a rule that's I don't think that you can read it everywhere, but a few um, if your single tickets were more expensive than your business tickets, including the bahn card, then you can deduct the bahn card. So let's say you need two, three, four trips, business trips in uh, per year, then you can deduct a barn card as business expense. The same for the public transportation. Um, if the monthly ticket is cheaper than all of your single tickets, but you need to go to work, then you can just deduct the monthly ticket as an expense. So this is, um, yeah, and the, the finance usually don't check this in detail if you don't have too many expenses. Nice. So maybe we can we can, we can close like with the last hospitality uh, uh, issue. I think we have um, we have uh, uh, thankfully like the, the restaurants are, are open uh, still. We hope it stays that way. Um, but uh, I think you told me in the past that freelancers normally they it's not like they deduct too much of uh, uh, hospitality with uh, lunch yeah. and dinner, but too little. Most people don't take advantage of this. This is your experience as a tax advisor. Correct? Yeah, usually they forgot um, to think about it beforehand. Let's say if you're going out with a colleague, working in the same business area, um, why not invite him and the other person invites you the next time? And you probably have some something, you have a part of it, it's business meeting, and you can explain it so you can deduct it from your expenses. Many freelancers don't deduct uh, the, these expenses and yeah, it could save you a lot of money and it's not very hard to, to do this. You shouldn't do it too often. So if let's say you're working as an IT specialist, a specialist and have every day uh, a big dinner, a big dinner, of course, this is not plausible. But if you're working as an IT consultant and have once a week, maybe could find it's it's OK. So just do it more often, think about it, you can save a lot of money. And there's a follow-up question on the per diems. Uh, can I deduct the per diems, the uh, Verpflegungsmehraufwendung, uh, even if my client is paying for my train, flight, hotel and meals? Yeah, this is um, also a question practically, how can I do it, let's say if you have a client and you paid the train and want to get uh, the money back from your client, um, this is also very practically, um, yeah, you couldn't deduct it if if you get paid for it. This is this is uh, for sure. Yes. Otherwise, you get it twice. Um, but especially for meals, let's say the 14 euros, and you get uh, breakfast, then you have to reduce the 14 euros by um, I have to about four euros. There are special amounts that you can have to deduct the the standard deductions. If you get the full meals for the whole day, of course, you couldn't deduct anything. Yeah, if you want to get reimbursed for the money, um, there are two possibilities. Just the possibility is to get the receipt and get the money for it, or you can put it on your invoice and deduct the, the travel expenses you had just as usual travel expenses. That's, these are the both, uh, both possibilities for this. So the um, the Verpflegungsmehraufwendung, the per diems, they're only cover meals. So train, flight, hotel can be separated. And then the question is, in your hotel, is breakfast included? If it's not included, then you can you can deduct the per diem 100%. If the breakfast is included, you would have to reduce your per diem for the value of the breakfast. No. There are certain rules to that. If you have, like, say, in your hotel, you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner included, then you couldn't deduct the per diem. So uh, the per diems in German, Verpflegungsmehraufwendungen, it really counts towards the stuff you eat and, and drink. So uh, you have to see if you get this from a client. Um, most clients probably they don't pay like a full uh, 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 full meals for the entire day. So um, I think in, in, in many cases you can actually take advantage of those Verpflegungsmehraufwendungen. Um, yeah, I hope that that answers uh, your question there. Um, so um, yeah, to wrap it up, there was like a short uh, uh, overview on on German taxes. There's a lot more detail 
we can we, we can we could go into. If you have any other question, um, you can uh, write it now down now. You can also send us a, an email later on. We'll try to 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 get back to you uh, as soon as possible. Um, feel free to check out uh, uh, our app. Here you have a, a discount code, a tax to 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 um, use the the full um, full function of, of the app for free. And you can see um, if this maybe like makes makes your life a little bit easier on on the tax and bookkeeping side. Um, yeah, thanks for your time. Um, uh, check out uh, our app if you uh, you want. Uh, check out our website. We have a lot of more resources on on questions that came up today. And um, uh, yeah, tune in next time when we will cover another another topic. We will um, coordinate with uh, with Malt. And if you have special issues you would like us to cover, um, feel free to reach out to our friends at Malt and and, and suggest like uh, the deep dive we're going to do next. And uh, yeah, that's it from us. Uh, Leah, over to you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to you. Um, it was a pleasure to to uh, have you here today and especially to kickstart this uh, cooperation together. So I'm really excited to have uh, monthly tax tips with you. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, I just posted the community on malt.de uh, email address. If you have any questions regarding to malt, but also if you have suggestions um, concerning uh, if you have like wishes, um, as Tino just said, uh, for an upcoming topic, feel free to, to reach us. And I'm super happy to welcome Tino and Andreas uh, soon for the next time. Thanks so much Thanks for, for having us. Yeah. Have Thank a great you. day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.